and in my drum lessons, we used to like one week play to my Destiny's Child albums, and then like the next week play to like Tower of Power albums. Behind every hit song is an undeniable beat. So why doesn't anyone talk to the drummer about it? We're getting behind the kit with some of the best drummers in North America. This is Drummer to Drummer. So I have to ask you what I ask everyone in these interviews is how much press would you do compared to other people in the band? None. For a reason? Uh, no, I might have done one or two interviews full band where you just stand there and don't say anything. <laughs> so you don't yeah. actually say anything, but you were a part of the interview. Yes, exactly. They yeah. just didn't ask you anything. I just didn't answer any questions. <laughs> and this is why we're here, to yeah. give you a voice. Yeah. How did you get into drumming and what were some of your influences? I started in like the band program when I was in grade six. Nice. Like, you know, when you go and you pick an instrument and for whatever reason, I picked drums. And so I did through the school system and then I started taking lessons, like drum kit lessons. I played the bass clarinet. Did you? And then I switched the to drums in grade clarinet. 11. Oh, okay. Who were some of your influences when you were starting out? Um, I used to, it's funny because I was thinking about this and in my drum lessons, we used to like one week play to my Destiny's Child albums and then like the next week play to like Tower of Power albums. So it was kind of everything. Uh, yeah. Destiny's Child? Yeah. It's I was amazing. a huge Destiny's Child fan. My teacher loved playing it to them. He was like, put that Destiny's Child on again. That's some, there's some cool stuff in there. It's all drum machines, basically, <laughs> but like... <laughs> How has your approach changed or morphed or however for when you're writing these songs? Um, yeah, I guess I had to learn basically the album because they had the album done and released basically before I joined the band. So I kind of came in and everyone had ideas of like how it should sound. We wanted to try and keep it as close to the album as possible, but not just me hitting stomps and claps. Yeah. Um, but now, when Paul brings songs, it's kind of like I get to start from scratch, and I'm like, I'm gonna do this, and then cool. let's do put this in there. So it's a lot more freedom now, That's awesome. which is great. You play in the symphony. Yes, I'm a per service musician, so I'm not actually in the symphony. But when they need extra players, I'm on the list of players they call. So I auditioned, and got the part. Kind so. Of. <laughs> It's going to sound like such a nerdy thing, but how cool is that? <laughs> I feel like that would be really cool to be a part of. It's it's pretty cool. It's And it's like completely different than playing in a band. So like last week, I had a symphony show on Thursday, and then Friday we had a Hillsburn gig, and it was just kind of crazy doing the two things, yeah. like two nights in a row. Just completely different. But so, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. How has that elevated your drum game? when Because you have to have a... Th uh, you have to ha have theory nailed down. You have to know how to read music. You have to do, right. you know, there's so many drummers that we speak to and, uh, you know, that don't know how to read music. Right. It can only be to your benefit, I assume. Yeah, I think so. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I, it definitely helped with learning the first album because right. I would get Jackson to like just write out the form of the song or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, with playing the glockenspiel, sometimes he play he writes parts for me to play. So cool. Yeah. And I, the fact that you can even pull that off is very impressive. Maybe pull it off. <laughs>